Jesus. Again, we're not here by accident. We're here because God permitted us. And through a miracle, He allowed us to be in the Holiness Church yeah, yeah, yeah. this Sunday morning. Right. And I say often, and uh, uh, not to constantly repeat myself, but you could have been somewhere else. Right. Amen. Yeah. Had it not been for the grace of God, Amen. where would I be this morning? But he smiled favor down upon each and every one of us. I said he smiled favor down on each and every one of us because each and every one of us is personal to God. When he called you, he called you by your name. And you didn't know it. But he called you by your name. He jumped over how many to get to you? Oh, thank you. If this gospel be hid, it's hid to them that are lost. Who yeah. the God of this world, Satan, and blind the eyes of them that would believe and be saved. Yeah. So we thank God that we opened up our eyes one day, and here we are. Yeah. Now it's up to us to hold on to the covenant of God and not be sidetracked by the cleverness of the devil. Yeah. He's a clever devil. Yeah. Don't fool yourself. Hallelujah. Adam and Eve was in the garden paradise. Right. And they were not programmed to die, but to live forever. Yeah. Yes. And he, God told Adam and Eve, all of this paradise is yours. All the animals and everything, they mm -hmm. at your command. Yes. But there's one thing God told them. I put a tree in the midst of the garden and I don't want you to touch that tree. Why did God put the tree there? And why did God allow the devil to be in a garden paradise? That's right, Father. The same principle. We're going to deal with this today. Why did God make good and evil? How come he didn't just make good and leave it alone? All right. Where would your testimony be? Where would your testimony be if God said, don't do this? And the devil said, it's all right, go ahead and do it. Yeah. How are you going to prove good if you can't establish evil? All right. You need to think about that. Yeah. So the Bible said God made good and evil and told you to make a choice. Right. And when he put the devil in that garden paradise, Adam and Eve had a choice. And when he put the tree there, it was not in the corner. The Bible said he put it in the midst of the garden. Amen. Midst means middle. Where they could identify with it every single day. They woke up. There's that tree. God said, everything is yours. But that tree. Don't bother it. Now he allowed the adversary, the devil, to be there and to tempt them and tell them, just like today. How many churches do they have? Glory to God. There's only one true church. Oh, Lord. God never said he's come back to churches. He's coming back for a church, singular. Yeah. Well, I want to get to my text, but let me give my testimonies first. Yeah. All right. Raise up a child the way that it should go when it's old. It'll not depart. Yeah. It's sometimes funny how a child can take their candy money and give it to the church. All right. And we have some people who won't even do that. Right. Adults. Yes, sir. Uh, by, the Bible says, by a child they shall, shall lead them. Yes, yes. Amen. All right, give your faith. Peace of gold. Amen. Joy, peace of gold. Amen. Daughter Hannah, peace of gold. Amen. Brother Jeremiah, whose birthday is today. Amen. And we're going to celebrate it after service at the Fellowship Hall. I want everybody to get there birthday present ready. <laughs> but Jeremiah, peace of gold. Dr. Savannah, peace of gold. Brother David, peace of gold. Brother Daniel, again, 11 pieces of gold. Zion Joy, 
six pieces of gold. Brother Josh, one hundred dollars. Deacon Josh, pardon me. Elder Smiley, two hundred dollars. Daniel Ricky Smith. No, Brother Rodney, forty dollars. Evangelist Rogers, one hundred dollars. Say again. Evangelist Rogers, one hundred dollars in this envelope. I haven't got to the rest of the envelopes yet. <laughs> All right. Senior Brooks, one hundred and sixty dollars. Again, uh, presenting Elder Ricky Smith, one hundred dollars. Evangelist Wagner. $1,000. I said before, you can't be God giving no matter how you try. And you make the sacrifice that some of us, and nobody here is rich. Work. Hit that time clock. Facing that devil every day on the job. With this cigarette smoke and Wonder why you don't laugh at their dirty jokes. Uh -huh. Tell them what they done at the bar last weekend. Mm -hmm. And get upset if you tell them what you done to church last That's weekend. Right. That's right. That's right. By their fruit. Yeah. You should know that. Hallelujah. Let me hear from the brothers of joy at this time. Uh, plus one. Amen. Touch me, Lord Jesus, mm -hmm. with thy hand of mercy. Make each throbbing heartbeat
your master. And I would like to go to First Corinthians yes. one and ten. As I previously stated, God has one room for one church. And that room is to identify his people or his church. The people cannot change the rule of God. The people can only obey the rule of God. And since we oftentimes don't quite understand the rule, God sent the book. Now, Bible is the Greek word which literally means, or translated into English, means a book. Yeah. The Greek word is Bible. Yeah. The English word is book. Yeah. So the, the book means the Bible. Yeah. Amen. So if we didn't write the Bible, but God did, prophecy came not in old time by the will of men, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. Amen. It is the hand picked of God that established the testimony that is recorded in what we call the Bible. Amen. And in Revelation 22nd chapter, you don't have to turn there, but it says you're not to add on or take away. So if I'm going to be a leader or a preacher of the gospel of Jesus Christ, I have to preach that gospel. Amen. I can't change it. And I can't make it fit to what appeases certain people and may not appease others. Amen. This book is not necessarily to win a crowd. Right. This book is to establish a relationship with God through instructions, or as I previously stated, rules. Yeah. Amen. We today have got to understand, and I've said often, there are 98% of people who call themselves Christians are not Christians at all. Amen. I saw a talk show host the other day, and she claimed she was a Christian. She had a little cross hanging from her neck. Mm -hmm. And she said she was a Christian, but she had on lipstick, mm -hmm. makeup, and earrings. Mm. And I think her hair was uh, red, but she wasn't no red head. Right. Now, here's the thing. If God has established a code, a principle for his people, you have to follow those principles. Yes. This identifies through a character what is of God and what is not of God. Yes. I've been going to the area and homeless people you see on the corner and with their blankets and sometimes their knapsack, all they got. And I pass out tracts and try to invite people to the church. Some come, stay a few days, and leave. Right. I was surprised to find out people hate you like. God. Through primarily certain women we have invited in, stay a few days, get $20, $30, $40, and leave. Mm -hmm. And they bring a bad report against the church. And I really got upset when I heard this because I did, you know, I thought people don't want to come, don't want to come. But I was surprised at how some of these people have actually blasphemed the church and the leader. But I remember, and I've shared with you often, I'm going to say it again. My pastor taught us many years ago when I was accused of smoking cigarettes at a bus stop, mm. and pastor called me into the office. Now, had I not been a minister, he never would have called me because, you, you know, you pray for people. Yes. And when they get too out of line, then you just disfellowship them, put them out. Yes. He called me to the office because I was a minister. Yes. He said, I have to call you in 
but you've been accused of smoking a cigarette at a bus stop past Tuesday. And I was so upset. Mm -hmm. And really, and this is the honest truth, I had my mind made up I was never going to come back to that church again. Glory. And especially, the pastor was to have so low esteem of me, mm -hmm. called me in and said, I was smoking at a bus stop. I said, first of all, pastor, I haven't rode uh, city transportation since I was a teenager. Because right. I had my own transportation when I was 17 years old, 16 to 17 years old. Yes. And when I come out of the army, first thing I did, got me a car. Right, yes. I said, now I can't, can't I say, and another thing, Pastor, I never did smoke cigarettes. All right. I was a cigar smoker, and I chewed tobacco. Yes. But I never bought a pack of cigarettes in my life. Glory. And I said, Pastor, when you come out to the parking lot and see the car I got out in the parking lot, and you see last two days, told me to bust up, and I had a nice Cadillac. I had my own business. Amen. You know, back in that dispensation of time, you got your own business. First thing you do is get your Cadillac. All right, well. Well, I, I could afford it because I was making like $200, $250 a day. Yeah. Right. Hey, man, God had blessed me to have a, a barber shop that was making a whole lot of money. Yeah. Yeah. So I said, Pastor, come out to the parking lot and see what I got out there. And he looked at me. He said, I believe you. He said, you can go. <laughs> and I said, well, Pastor, I want to know who told that lie on me. I'm burning up inside. And I would have confronted them, too. Pastor, oh, <laughs> I'm not going to tell you. Amen. I said, Pastor, the Bible said I should be able to face my own accuser. He said, yeah, that's Bible. He said, but I still ain't going to tell you. He said, you can go. And he said, the second time I got to go, I got to go. All right, uh, or to show disrespect. And I can't show disrespect to my leader. So I started toward the door, and he called me back. He said, let me tell you something. Come back in here. He said, let me tell you something. He said, you can never outrun a lie, but your character can always outlive one. Right, and that stuck with me, and I had to reflect on that the other day. And I said to myself, well, then I happened to think, look what they done to Jesus. Yes. Didn't the Pharisees call him Beelzebub? Yep. Yes. Beelzebub means devil. Right. Yes. They call God a devil. Now, you think he wasn't upset? Didn't he preach a sermon and 70 Seven. disciples left him that day? Yep. Right. Now, he being in the flesh, his feelings was hurt. Yes. So he turned to the other 12 and yes. said, will you also leave me? Amen. And Peter said, where can we go? Right. You got the word of eternal life. Hallelujah. Yeah. Anytime you take a stand for God, the world is going to come against you. And let me just share this sentence before I get to my text here. Take uh, maybe some, well, I don't know what the evangelist ever remember that brother. And evangelist Wagner might know. There was a brother who came to the church. Oh, he was just crying on crack. He wanted to be delivered. We prayed for him. He got baptized. And I think he stayed with the church about maybe two months. One day he come by the shop. Shop was right down the street from the church. He said, I want the key to the church. I want to I want to go in and I want to mop the bathrooms. I want to vacuum the church. I want to clean up in there. Something's heavy on my heart. He's just crying and crying. I said, well, well, okay. And I give him the key. He went up, vacuumed, cleaned up and everything. So I just happened to, it was like on a Friday. And that Sunday I looked in the drawer. Drawer I had about $150. Well, benevolence. Yes. Somebody need $20, somebody need $10 here, and they, you know, kept it in the drawer. I look in the drawer, here's a note. I uh, took $35, and I'm ashamed of you. So when I was able to see the brother, I said, what, you took $35, and you ashamed of me? Well, you know, I was a crackhead addict. You know, and you left that money in that drawer on purpose. You left that money on purpose to tempt me, and God said, you're not supposed to tempt nobody. I said, oh, glory, hallelujah. He stole $35 from the envelope. At least he did, didn't take all of it and left a note. Yeah. He took $35. He said, you know, I had a habit. So therefore, you left the money in the envelope. I didn't even know he was going to my office. Right, right. I thought you weren't going to keep in the sanctuary. I never did lock the office. I don't believe in that. Amen. And uh, I'm surprised. And by me being new 
in the pastoral field. I said, well, wait a minute, we teach this brother off the street. Yes. Yes. And this brother asked to clean up the church. And I gave him the key out of my pocket. Yes. He stole $35 from the envelope and then blamed me for tempting him. Oh. Oh, I said, what in the world is going on? And it upset me. But I found out something, church, and you have to understand this. When you take a stand for God, people ostracize you and hate you for the stand you take for Jesus. And he was telling people, I tempted him. And you know, I'm on crack. First I knew you was on crack, but I didn't know about being nice to you. I was tempting you. So people today take the church out of context. They think the church is supposed to take care of you. Come supposed on. to give you money. That's what you're supposed to do. What? You claim you saved. Oh no, no, you got your you got you got your thing twisted. Hallelujah. Jesus said if a man don't work, he ought not to eat. Who do you feed? You feed, feed the widows because they didn't have no welfare then. Yes. Yes. The lame and halted, those who are afflicted in their body and yes. can't work. Yes. The blind, the lepers who are outside the city limits. Mm -hmm. You feed them. Yes. You don't feed no grown man right. oh. who got two hands, yeah. two eyes, uh -huh. two legs. Ain't nothing wrong with you. Come Come what? You playing the system. Yeah. Why should I work when you work? Oh. And I can get you or the government to take care of me. Oh, do oh, yeah. We help anybody who's in need. But don't, don't, don't you think you can run some kind of game on us? Oh, yeah. See, we, 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 we ain't always, always been saved. See, you know, we know the game. We know about ADC. We know about the welfare check. Hallelujah. So don't think that because we give to help someone that we fools. And I shared before, when I was out in the world, I, I never did use drugs, never did drink. And I used to train horses for people who had whole lots of money. And me and partners and people who we were in the same class, we gambled, we never did drink, use drugs. Yeah. And this one time, this person invited us to his house, this true story. And he had a line of white powder on a table. Went in, I, I knew what it was, my partner knew, knew what it was. Huh? He said, go ahead, get, get you here, people walking up the straw and, you know, and, and there's nothing happened. I said, right. no. He said, well, why you don't get high? And so I let it, we had a, we had a, a term we used. We're not smart enough to use drugs. All right. Oh. <laughs> Can you catch it? So it slipped out of my mouth. I said, no, uh, I'm not smart enough to use dope. Right. He said, oh, okay. And when I was leaving, he said, uh, what, what did you say? And I, I thought, he said, oh, and he started laughing. I said, uh -huh. I got you. I was on my door. Now you people, you know, they play hardball. All right, brother. You get too far out of the line with them. Bye. All right. But they always respected me and my party and those who were like us. Amen. Because, you know, believe it or not, those type of people respect a person who don't use drugs. Okay. Alcohol. Yeah. 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 I can go that man, get fifteen hundred dollars, get two thousand dollars, <laughs> pay him back sometimes, sometimes never pay him back. All right. But he respected me. Yes. Because I respected myself. Amen. See, there's certain limits. Even if you're in the world, there's certain limits. Well, you draw, you, you, you got to draw a line in the sand. Right. Oh, man, drugs. I know what, well, I'm going to use drugs. Get a habit of, like that preacher, $125 a day. Where am I getting $125 a day? Amen. I ain't got no education. Yes. And, if, and if you did have education, you can't handle that kind of money. Oh. Ask a school teacher if you think I'm lying. Amen. So you draw a line, and you don't go over that line. So I'm trying to say, people who help people who are in need, sometimes the people that are in need think the people that are helping them are fools. All right. Well, brothers and sisters, never think that the church is foolish because they reach out to try to help somebody along life's highway. Yeah. And that's why we judge nothing before it's time. I don't care what you've done in your past. And 
those who know me and know this church know. I don't care what you've done. Amen. Bank robber, killer, rapist, child molester. I don't care what you've done. When you come in here and you want to be saved, we judge you from the day you walk in that door. Amen. Hallelujah. And all things, like Jesus said, all things are what? Passed away. God said, I'll take your sins and cast them to see of forgiveness to be remembered no more forever. When you get converted, your past life is gone. Amen. When you are buried in baptism Amen. by water, symbolically killing the old you, when you come out that water, hallelujah, you're a new creation in Christ Jesus. Amen. All things are passed with old, all things are now made new. Amen. Give me my, my text. Now I beseech you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you speak the same thing. Now why did God leader put in the scripture the very first chapter of the church of Corinth, the principal church yeah. that you all speak the same thing that there be not what? no divisions among you no divisions amongst you what does that mean? one church Amen. one rule and one God yes. for that one church yeah. and one rule for that one church yes. Yes. why is it you got all these denominations and different ones speaking different things? Why is it you can go to some of these churches now? I go to sometimes, I drop in the church across uh, where I live, down on uh, William Street. Yes. And a smaller church. Yep. And I see the pastor up there with overalls and a shirt, work shirt and everything, tennis shoes. Uh -huh. He's preaching. I listen to some of the words. Because I'm, I'm hoping he's going to invite me to speak. Hallelujah. And some of you ministers out there, you get a chance, you can go in there. Don't even want to wear your collar. And sit back there some Sunday evening and just listen. You don't know who you can win down the road yeah. to come into the truth. Amen. And I listen to all that garbage he's speaking. So I passed him a track. He ain't never responded to the track. Yeah. And here's my point. Do you have to dress with a shirt and tie to come to church? Does that save you? No. But a principle of respect for the church of God is different than the respect you have going on your job. Right, yes. Church is not your job. Yes. Church is not to carry out. Yes. The church is something holy. Right. Yes. Now, does the Bible say you have to wear a shirt and tie? No, but examples have been set through the years of people dressing differently when they go to the house of God, That's even right. in the false churches. Yes. That's right. There never was a time you'd go to a church to preach and have a shirt and tie on. That's right. Yeah. And a suit. Yeah. Or a collar. Yeah. Never. Now you watch on TV. You see T.D. Jake yeah. with a sweatsuit on. Yeah. Tennis shoes. Yeah. Preaching before 25,000. Well, what's the difference? Here's the difference. When God chose Moses, listen close. When he chose Moses to be the first prophet, he, let, he watched him for until he was in his 90s. Yeah. 90 years right. old. Yes. Why? He had to get him ready. Get him just right. Because you're going to be my first prophet. I got to get you just right. I got to let you go through a whole lot of chiseling right and a whole lot of suffering. Yeah. From being a prince under Pharaoh mm -hmm. to tend your sheep on the mountain. Yes. Now, when God appeared to him through the bush, he said, wait a minute. Let me see this bush. Burn it, but it ain't on fire. I got I to gotta, I gotta watch this. Mm -hmm. What was this? To get his attention. Amen. Now, when he got Moses' attention, he said, Moses, by name. And Moses said, here am I. Then he said, pull the shoes off your feet. The ground you stand on, what? Holy ground. Now, he had walked that ground how many years with them sheep? It wasn't holy. But when God's presence was there, that made the ground holy. So I tried to be a prophet for that. You just can't come to me any old way. Pull your shoes off. Show some respect. Put you some meat toes on. If you want to a job making $100,000 a year, if you're going to put a suit and tie on, put a suit and tie on when you come to church. Yeah. Old folks, you had what was called Sunday going meeting clothes. Y'all know what those are. Right. Too young. <laughs> you had one suit, one shirt, one tie, yes. and you put that over in the corner. Mm -hmm. Only time you wore that suit and tie was going to church on Sunday or to somebody's funeral. That's right, brother. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Since they had a dress and set apart. Yeah. Oh, here, that, no, that's my Sunday dress. Right. And a pair of shoes, oh. old shoes, but they was 
clean and neat. Yeah. Put them over in that corner. Those are my Sunday shoes. Yeah. 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 They raise your children up. Uh -uh, uh, don't do it. Uh, let those clothes you wear to Sunday. Put them over here. Yeah. Right. Amen. Right. Hallelujah. Yeah. Them, I don't wear them shoes out to play. Put them over here. those Sunday shoes. Yeah. They was teaching respect for the house of God. I'm trying to let you know anytime you don't respect the house of God, you don't respect yourself. And if you don't respect yourself, you can't respect God. So don't throw stones at us because we try seemingly. Oh, you're trying to be different. Yes, we are. Give me a Deuteronomy chapter 7 and 6. For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. Say it again. For thou art an holy people. Now he's talking about his handpick that he has set apart. Yes. Thou art a holy people. Unto the Lord thy God. To who? To the Lord thy God. To the preacher. God. To the Woo! Lord. To the saints. To the Lord. Yeah. To the choir. To the Lord. Right. You're holy people to God. Yeah. Read. The Lord thy God hath chosen thee to be a special people unto himself. To, and he chose you to be what? A special people. Do y'all know the difference between special and ordinary? Yes. Right, the Bible says he chose you to be a special people unto himself. Yes. That makes you different. Read. Above all the people that are upon the face of the earth. Wait, you better read that latter part again. Above all people that yeah, are upon the face. He chose you to be a special yes. people above all the people yes. on the earth. Yes. yes. The church of God is above other people. Yeah, Who says so? God says so. Yeah. He said you're special. Yeah. You're special is different from ordinary people. Right, 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 yeah. right, you're not just ordinary. You're special. Yeah. Yeah. God chose you. Yeah. Yeah. Read. The Lord did not set his love upon you, nor choose you, because you were more in number than any people. He didn't choose you because you were more in number. He didn't choose you because you went to the big Baptist church. Amen. Read it again. The Lord did not set his love upon you. Nor he didn't set his love upon you. Nor choose you. Nor choose you. Because you were more in number. Because than you people. were more in number. Yeah. For you were the fewest of all people. Did y'all catch that? Oh. You were the fewest of all people. Why are we the fewest? Jesus said, straight is the gate. And narrow the way that leads to life or leads to heaven. And few there be that can find it. Yes. Yes. When it's all said and done, you heard me say this many times, only a few people going to heaven. That's right. Forget about all these multitudes and all these people shouting and dancing, carrying on like, hey, ain't but a few going to heaven. Who is that? The ones who do the will of God. Amen. The ones who follow the Bible. Give me Matthew 7, chapter, I think I want verse 18. Watch those. I'm going to try not to be long. This thing is burning me up. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit. A good tree cannot bring evil fruit. Now listen. All you Joyce Myers and T.D. Jakes and all you hypocrite devils that pack out the church and you got 25, 30,000 members you claim. And that's exactly what you got, members. To a club, not to a church. And they pay their dues. They don't pay tithes. They pay dues. The difference between dues and tithes. All right. All right. Hallelujah. Right. Read. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. Every, and the tree is a character. Y'all know that. Yeah. Talking about a person. Yeah. Ain't talking about a tree. Because a tree ain't never sinned against God. A tree ain't never done nothing. All right. <laughs> but how's the nest of birds? All right. Amen. And that can't find no more bird ever sinned against God. All right. So it's talking about a person. Read. Yeah. Wherefore, by their fruits you shall know them. By their fruit you shall know them. Yes. Read. Not everyone that saith unto me. Hear me, George Myers, T.D. Jakes, all you hypocrite devils out there. Oh. Read that again. Not everyone that saith unto me. Lord, not everyone that confess me, uh -huh. Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. Not everyone that confess me as Lord shall enter the kingdom of heaven. But he that doeth the will of my Father which is in him. He that doeth the will yes. of my Father. Where is the will found? Yes. It's found in the Bible. Yes. Paul taught, if a man strive for mastery or completeness in Christ, 
yet he is not crowned except he strive lawfully. Yes. Lawfully means you got to do it the legal way. What is the legal way? Following the Bible yes. as God has expressed to us by a teacher who's able to express the truth to the people seeking after truth. Amen. Now give me Acts 8 chapter and wind this thing down. Amen. Jump right in verse 26. And the angel of the Lord spake unto Philip, saying, Arise, and go toward the south into the way that goeth down. this is very important. There's an Ethiopian, a man of high esteem. I believe he was the treasurer of one, some rich person in the Bible. And he had the Bible, but he didn't know how to read the Bible. But the main thing, look, he had the Bible, and he was trying his best. Anytime you want to be saved, don't you know God will send somebody your way yes. to save you if you're really sincere and want to be saved? Amen. That's why I said you're not here by accident. Amen. Read that again. And the angel of the Lord spake unto Philip, saying, Arise and go toward the south into the way that goeth down from Jerusalem unto Gaza, which is desert. And he arose and went, and behold, a man of Ethiopia, a eunuch of great authority. A man of Ethiopia, of great authority. Now there's one man yes. wants to be saved. Yes. Got the Bible, but can't you don't understand what he's reading? Yeah. Read. Under Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, who had the charge of all her treasure, and had come to Jerusalem for to worship. He came where? To worship. To Jerusalem to what? Uh -oh. To worship. He was seeking after God. Yes. yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Read. Was returning and sitting in his chariot read Isaiah the prophet. Then the Spirit said unto Philip, Go near and join thyself to this chariot. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Angel spoke to Philip and told him to what? Go near and join thyself to this chariot. Join yourself to this man who's seeking after God. Uh huh. And Philip ran thither to him. Philip obeyed. Yeah. Glory. And heard him read the prophet Isaiah and said, Understandest thou what thou readest? <laughs> Wait a minute. He said to the Ethiopian, He said, Do you know what you're reading? Glory. Read. And he said, how can I accept some man to guide me? Oh. How can I? It's some somebody teach me. Amen. Let a school teacher give a child uh, uh, a book in algebra and he's in the second grade. <laughs> child, do you understand what you're reading? I can read it, I don't know what I'm reading. All right, brother. Can you help me? Amen. Can you help me in this math? Amen. Can you help me in the division? And can you help me how to spell? I don't know how to spell. I know ABC, but I don't know how to connect them. So you got to have a teacher to teach a person ABC. Why? So they can learn how to read and write. Read. And he desired Philip that he will come up and sit with him. Oh, wait. He asked Philip to do what? To come up and sit with him. Please come up and teach me. Amen. Read. This part I like. The place of the scripture which he read was this. He was led as a sheep to the slaughter, and like a lamb dumb before his shearer, yes. so opened he not his mouth. In his humiliation his judgment was taken away. And who shall declare his generation? For his life is taken from the earth. Watch those. And the eunuch answered Philip and said, I pray thee, of whom speaketh the prophet this? Now the eunuch asked uh, uh, Philip, said, who's he speaking? Watch. Of himself or of some other man? Then Philip opened his mouth and began at the same scripture. Philip opened his mouth and began what? The same scripture. He took the Bible from the eunuch who didn't know what he was reading. Yes. And, and what did he say? What did he read? And preach unto him Jesus. What? Preach who? <laughs> preach unto him Jesus. Yeah. Well, Mary, what more? Right. Jesus. Yeah. Oh, Lord, yeah. right. oh, no. yeah. oh, no. hallelujah. Oh, Lord, hallelujah. Mary wasn't even born. Right. But Philip took the Bible and preached out that Bible. Tell me why ain't Jesus on me. And as they went on their way, as you went on their way, they came into a certain water. Came to what? To a certain water. He came to a certain water. Now wait a minute. The Bible didn't say Philip mentioned anything about water baptism. Mm -hmm. But when you use line upon line and precept upon precept, you can write, you divide the word of truth and bring it together in a clarity. Philip must have mentioned something to him about water baptism. Read. And the eunuch said, see, here's water. Here's water. What does hinder me to be baptized? Wait a minute. Here's water here. There's a book over here. What keeps me from getting baptized? Read. 
And Philip said, if thou believest with all thine heart. Uh, uh, wait a minute, T.D.J. Joyce Myers, I want you to hear this part now. Mm -hmm. If you believe with all thy heart, read. Thou mayest. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Wait a minute. But it's reading Isaiah, wasn't it? Yes. So I believe Jesus is God incarnate. Yes. Because Mary wasn't born. Yes. Read. And he commanded the chariot to stand still. Told the horse to stand still. And they went down both into the water. What? And they went both Amen. down into the water. They went both into the water. Amen. Amen. Didn't get a glass and sprinkle, did he? Right. No. Amen. Didn't shake no hand and say, oh, now we got the Holy Ghost. <laughs> they went into the water. What? Both Philip and the eunuch. Both Philip and the eunuch? And he baptized him. And he baptized him. Yeah. Brothers and sisters, there's so much inconsistency and lies told about Jesus and this Bible. Yes. Yes. When you come into the knowledge of the truth and God send you a prophet who will rightly divide the word of truth to you, you need to hold on to that prophet yes. and cling to that word. Yes. If you are sincere in your heart, God will always send you help. Amen. That eunuch read that Bible and read that Bible. He could not figure out what that Bible was saying and God stopped an evangelist on the road. Yes. Yes. So go to that one man. Yeah. How many? One. One. He, he didn't have no problem with no problem. One man. Yeah. Want to be saved. Hallelujah. I wish you could get what I'm saying to you. Come on. Wait, I'll tell you how important you are. Yes. He said one preacher Amen. to one man yes. because he had the Bible and didn't know how to read it. Amen. He wanted to be saved. He went to Jerusalem, didn't he, to worship. Yep. But he wasn't saved. And God sent a preacher to save that one man. Yes. Brothers and sisters, God sent a preacher to each and every one of you and to me. Yes. I heard him off the radio one Sunday morning. I was in the false church. Cool. One Sunday morning, I heard him off the radio. I said, my goodness, I've never heard that before. Yeah. And the very next Sunday, God woke me up early in the morning. I'm getting ready to go, go to the false church. Amen. I heard that same preacher. I said, oh, wait a minute here. I tried to catch the address. Couldn't get, tried to catch the phone number. Couldn't catch it. Right. I said, well, one thing, I, I, I got the street Lord. and know the name of the church. Amen. Do you know I drove from Ann Arbor to Detroit? Was that 38 miles? Oh, and I found that street. Oh, and I drove up and down that street, and I hadn't drove, I don't think, a minute. All right. I said, wait a minute. There's that church right there. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I stood in the door and sat in the back. Yeah. And I've been in church ever since because I knew the word of God is right but I didn't know how to read it yes. I knew holiness was right but I didn't know how to live it Glory. but God sent me a leader a teacher and a guide and showed me how to interpret the Bible and how to live by the Bible yes. so I say to all young devils out there you can ostracize me and talk about me all you want mm. One thing for certain, I know who I am in Christ That's Jesus. Right. Yes. And you may hate me, but God loves me. Yes. How do you know he loves me? I'm 90 years old. Yes. Six heart attacks. Yes. Diabetes. Yes. High blood pressure. Yes. Prostate cancer. Yes. Look at me now. Yes. Lord, don't let me fail. Now, there are two brothers we're going to baptize this morning, Brother Amen. Wolf and Brother Cowell. Cowell. Collins, Cowell, 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 Cowell. 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 and Brother Wolf are going to be baptized this morning. And you want to say, without water baptism, you can't be saved. And Jesus proved that when he went to John the Baptist, and John the Baptist said, no need to baptize you. I know who you are. And Jesus said, suffer to be so. Thus it is to fulfill all righteousness. Now, T.D. Jakes and George Myers and the rest of you devils, you don't teach water baptism today. 
Because you got 25, 30,000 members, and you ain't got time to baptize nobody. But if it was good enough for Jesus and to set the example, don't you tell me that you don't need to be born and baptized. And you can't get born baptized by the Son and Holy Ghost. Yes. Yes. You got to do it in the name. Neither is salvation any other, for there's no other name under heaven whereby you must be saved. And the saving name is Jesus. The Bible says, for he shall save his people from their sins. So you've got to do it the right way and not the wrong way. Yes. You've got to do it the Bible way. God never told you baptized by the Son of the Holy Ghost. Yes. That's a Roman Catholic baptism. Yes. And the Roman Catholic Church is as far away from God as Satan is. Yes. Check it out. Encyclopedia Britannica. Haitian Encyclopedia Religion, page 88. Yes. Kenyan Encyclopedia Religion. Yes. Shape, Bible, Dictionary of Religion. Amen. Check it out, all them books. Including the Catholic Encyclopedia, Volume uh -huh. 3. Yeah. That's right. All tell you, water baptism was changed from Jesus' name to words Father, Son, and Holy Ghost in the second century. Right. That's at the Council of Nicaea in 325. Right. Yeah. Apostles always baptized in the name of Jesus. Because yeah. salvation can only be in the name of the testator to the right. will. Yes. And the testator to the will is Jesus. Well, that name is not legal. Make a will all you want, but if you don't sign the name, the will ain't legal. So if you want to get baptized the right way, not the Catholic way, but the right way, the apostles' way. You want down in the name of Jesus Christ, the mission of sin. So Elder Brooks, take the two candidates and also want to say, now when you do this, you take awareness of what you're doing. Don't fool around with this. You do it, you don't go back to cigarettes. And liquor. And drugs. Oh, yeah. Don't do that. Because you, now you're playing with God. Yeah. And God said, I know your thoughts from afar off. Amen. So we always tell a person, be careful what you're doing. Yeah. If you feel you ain't right, then hey, tell God, I, I'm not right yet. Oh. Don't go forward with it. Yeah. Amen. Peter told God, and God chose him to be one of the chief apostles. Oh, yeah. He said, Lord, I, I got a problem. Jesus, said, what is it? He said, help my unbelief. Didn't he say so? I want you to pray for my unbelief. Why? There's certain things I can't quite get hold to. This is a faith journey. And Peter knew he had was a shortness with him concerning faith. He said, Lord, help my unbelief. And we know God did. Because he went on to be a great apostle. All right, so the baptized person don't want to go out and try to get high. And want to get water baptized. Amen. No, you get water baptized for remission of sin. In other words, I made in my mind. Now, remission means removal. Yes. Yes. Remission takes the word to remit yes. or take away from. When I'm ready to take all those sins away. Yes. Now, who's it up to? It ain't up to God. And it's not up to the devil. The devil can't make you stop drinking. That's right. God can't make you stop drinking. God can't make you stop smoking. Yes. God can't make you stop using drugs. Who does it? You do. Amen. But I don't have the strength. Yeah, you do. Because he said, the Holy Ghost is greater in you than the devil is out there in the world. Amen. So if I Amen. got a habit because I wanted to take a cigarette or shoot some dope, if I wanted to, that same principle of wanting to, I could not want to. One I will, another I won't. Yeah. It's up to you to make the choice. What is the benefit? Heaven? Lord. To make the right choice? Yeah. What is the benefit over here? Death down the road. Yeah. If not tomorrow, next right. week. If not next week, next month. It's surely going to happen. Yeah. So what I do? I thank God for giving me the option to make the right choice yeah. and the strength to make the right choice. So I'm going to make the right choice. Yeah. Amen. So let's conduct ourselves accordingly. And no problem. We got plenty of water. All right. Hey, you the water, we can go down to the river. All right. Do you know that's what we used to do? Do you know I've seen them go down to the river? People talk about oh, the water is cold. Listen, I've seen them break the ice in the creek. Come on. Go down in Jesus' name. Was it cold? For a minute. 
But when that fire started burning, Hallelujah. Want to be followers of Christ. I want to be can't change the word of God and uh, thank God for prophet testimonies as he spoke about his testimonies as he was a young minister amen and keep us encouraged what he went through amen and what he's still going through you know with the people always trying to come up against the church uh -huh. and a, a couple of weeks ago a lady on my job you know she always spoke and then she finally asked she said not to offend you what church I said you're not gonna offend me she wanna ask about the veil in the church yeah. and I she, I told her she said oh there's a lot of them out there, I guess she's a Pentecost, but she meant us with veils. Oh, I meant, you know, after that, two days later, she ain't spoken nothing. I said, you know what, maybe because we had someone in our church that was probably from the shelter, <laughs> I thought about it, said something bad about us. You know, all of a sudden, you spoke every morning, hey, how are you, broke your neck? All of a sudden, I told you, my church, and then you won't speak, but that's the same thing. But, you know, I don't care. I got... I got glad. I said, well, praise the Lord. In my spirit, I was like, praise the Lord. Amen. We doing something right. So the prophets, you know, said they, uh, basically, they, we recognize the devilish in them, and they don't like that. We know the game they're playing. Amen. But like prophets said, we had played that game in the world, but we left the world. Amen. These old things are passed away. Thank God that we say old things are passed away. We came into church because we want to get right. We said we're tired of this world. We don't want this. We don't want that. And, and prophet, you know, when you get around people that you're in the world, they, why would you want to be around them? Because they're going to do the same thing they've been doing. Nothing's changed. Amen. So that's why we came out the world. We come into the newness of life. Amen. And thank God prophet has sent, uh, God has sent prophet to us. Amen. Yeah. You got to know, come to Jesus. Amen. Respectfully. We spoke about coming to God, dressing respectfully. If you went to a job, you're going to look uh, like you want the job. So we come right. to church like we want to be in church. Amen. Respectfully. He said, uh, we're special above all people. We are, amen. And, you know, we need prophet to guide us. You're going to have to have someone yes. guide you in the truth, amen. Because your mom and dad will guide you right. Prophet is here to guide you, amen. And he's going out, 90 years old, going out, trying to get people off the street to get right. Yes. And, you know, lay it out. Maybe it could be drugged over there. And here, just like Jesus passing through, you got a prophet passing through. Amen. And there's God coming through the prophet and saying, here, come on, let me help you get your right, get your mind right, get yourself right. And people are, are coming up against and don't even want it. But thank God we want it. We're here, amen. Thank God we a prophet, amen. And I thought about that. I was like, look at prophet going through, walking on the street, seeing people and just stay laid out half dead. And God will come and say, let me take that and heal that death out of you and get you right to come be with me, amen. So it's truly a blessing, and the prophet don't take his calling lightly, amen. You got these, uh, these uh, like you said, these members, these motivated speakers with these big churches coming in T-shirts and blue jeans and preaching and trying to make them feel good, and everybody jumping up and laughing for joy, you know, as you see on the TV. But prophet's coming trying to get your mind right, not taking your money, 
giving money, but you preachers out there on YouTube, wherever you are, out there trying to jump up for a joy, and you don't have joy because when you leave, like I said, you're going probably somewhere up the street uh, looking for something else. All you got to do is come to Prophet, amen, yes. and he'll give you the word, and he's telling us and the people how to get right and stay right, amen. And like Prophet said, he has a pastor that he taught, went up 38 miles from Ann Arbor, Detroit, amen. to find the truth, amen. And people are still right here in Spartanburg, amen. And Prophet, I remember on 7 Mile, he'll come to Florence, and my mother come to the condominium in 7 Mile, and he'll go. He'll go away and he'll have his little, you know, vacation. But the prophet was out here vacating, looking for a church. He had a plan. I mean, he had a mission. Yeah. Look how many years. That's been 95, 96. When we got here in 2000, I believe, some came in 7 and yes. 6. Uh -huh. I came in 08. But think about it. He was coming to scope out the land. Amen. Right. He said, because I, I know this is a place. Yeah. He didn't find it in Columbia, but he found a Spartan bird. Amen. All them years. Amen. He saw a prophet was vacating, come to Florence. Though he had a plan. Amen. And right. look. All them years, we're here, amen. Thank God we're in Spartanburg, left Detroit, amen, the, right. one of the big wickedest cities, amen, oh, yeah. to come yeah. to Spartanburg, amen, Lord. to praise the Lord and bring the people, but they don't, the prophets bring the people back to the church, yeah. but they don't want it, but thank God we are here, amen, yeah. we are here to keep the church going, but I thank God for our prophet, amen, I think the other day, Sunday night, I saw Shawa, and Shawa was going, and we saw a prophet walking up his hill, getting his, his, his exercise, and yeah. you saw the hat. Right. Now, that's prophet. I said, I don't want to mess up his stride. I said, All right. <laughs> you know, prophet was going. I said, who is going up that hill? Going down, but going up that hill, it's like when you're down mm -hmm. and you're in church, you know, and you find the truth, you're down, you know, and then you find the truth, you're up. Just like prophet going up that hill. You, but I thank God, amen, because it gives us the strength, amen, it keeps you encouraged. The prophet always say this word has to keep you encouraged. You got to have the faith. And prophet, I think about like he said, going back, I'm not cutting off when I went 38 miles from Ann Arbor to Detroit. It's no joke, just driving up and down, coming back and forth. But he found the truth. And I thank God that we're here, amen. We, and thank God, Prophet, 90 years old, my goodness, 90 years old, and out there on the street, just, yeah. you know, just seeing him. So I thank God we lift up Prophet, and I thank God for myself, what we've been through coming to profit, amen, yeah. getting what we need, amen, that's in our soul, right, amen, right. and learn how to keep the faith, you didn't know how to keep the faith, yeah. but profit taught us how to keep the faith, yeah. when you got pain in your body, amen, when you're going right. through something on the job, when you may say something don't look right or act right or whatever, you can say in the name of Jesus, I oh. thank you and praise you, yeah. Lord, when you you think like your taxes or something not right or coming or whatever, financial, you can say thank you Jesus for my job so I can pay my tithes and offering, yeah. amen, yeah. thank you Jesus, because you don't have to have anything, you, like Prophet said, a man don't work, you're not going to eat. All right. yeah. it, trust me, your own grown family, mama, daddy ain't going to feed you. Don't say, you're going to get up out of here and you're going to go to work. So I thank God that we have our hands and our feet that we can work for the Lord, amen, yeah. whatever you have. And the natural, amen, that you have obtained, that you can bring to the church, let the Lord use you, amen. You know, but I thank God. I'm not going to talk too long, but I thank God for our prophet, amen. He's done his work, 90 years old. He's still bringing people back to church. My process is a decision, and we all have to make that decision, amen. Thank God we made the right decision, amen. Thank God I ain't in no Baptist church no more, amen. Thank God nobody's trying to take your money and say, oh, it'll be all right, go ahead, you can fornicate. And you can go ahead and smoke a little cigarette. Oh, we got some downstairs. But thank you, Jesus, for the truth, amen. Hallelujah! We got to say that. Preachers is out there looking at prophet. You're just jealous. Just yeah. gotta line up with prophet and pray my strength to the Lord. Amen. 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 Giving double honor to God's true prophet, Bishop Parker H. Walker. Bishop <laughs> Walker, Bishop Walker, Walker, Bishop Walker, Bishop Walker, Bishop Walker, all the saints in the household of faith, all the preachers. Thank God for the, the message from, oh. from Prophet today. Powerful message there. The state it turns and it stays strong, amen. And stay strong in the spirit, stay strong in the Lord, amen. And I, uh, man, went up to the Detroit uh, over the weekend and Man, just to see how 
Uh, man, the devil is just working his hand there, amen. But thank God for the Holy Ghost. Thank him for the Spirit. Thank him for the prayer. And for, I mean, even to see the kids, like, my goodness, like, going crazy. I, my one nephew, he, he said some stuff to, to his mother. And I said, my goodness, like, this boy, like, eight years old. But, man, thank God for the Holy Ghost, yeah. amen. I'm just glad. I'm glad to be in, in the household of faith, amen, to see Prophet like uh like Vance brought out, amen. Prophet preaching and, and teaching and, and living what he preached and teach. That that's what it boils down to. Amen. And he has a testimony to, to back it up, amen. And something the world don't have, amen. But thank God for uh all of the, the, the praise and testimony today and the, the sweet spirit that's been here all day long. As you pray my shepherd, I pray yours, amen. Take that opportunity and run with it. Run straight Amen. to heaven with it. Amen. So we are all lined up. Freedom in Jesus' name. Thank God for the great time we had on the day. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Amen.